Hey, thanks for tuning in to Race Grooves. This motorized Max Tracks racing set, I actually seen this on eBay last year, 2015, and the lady said that it was complete and it doesn't look like anything's missing, but no guarantees. That's all, it always makes you nervous, right? Uh, do they really know what they're selling? Especially when the box is in bad shape, there's like water damage right here or some type of water damage, but uh, it's been open, taped, uh, the top of the box is torn, missing the little piece right here where the handle would pop up right through this flap. It's like, well, I really rarely buy stuff if they say they're not sure if it's complete and if it's been opened up. And for a presentation, you kind of like things to be sealed. But she said, no, really, it looks like nothing's been touched. So, I mean, I got it at a nice price anyways. I'll talk about the price next. But when I got it, it looked like that. And not only that, it still had the two cars in the baggie. Yep, I think it's complete. Here's a look at the price tags. Original price, $59.99. Got clearance at uh, $35.90. Then wound up at an estate sale for $20. To be honest, that was, that was a pretty good price. Especially with everything complete. Maybe you recognize that clearance tag. Yeah, it says exclusive at Target. Target exclusive. By the way, this has copyright of 1998. I'll talk about more about that later. Three motorized power charger boosters, a crash zone with two daredevil jumps, 360 loop and turbo spiral, over 35 feet of track, and I showed you the two Hot Wheels vehicles. Here's a close-up of that water damage. You can really see it now, but there's that, uh, there's that interesting turbo spiral right there has these poles for you to uh, elevate the track. Uh, I haven't seen those in a long time. Here's the loop, 35 feet of track, and in the middle they have this uh, crash intersection right here. Here's a look at the logo that they were using back in the late 90s and probably into the early 2000s. Uh, this set's going to require 6D batteries. If you thought the front was in bad shape, the back is in even worse shape. Lots of rubbing on the box, water damage, it's amazing that the set doesn't even look like it was used. It looks like everything's in place. I'll be counting them up. Up in the corner, they do show another couple layouts that you can do. But, you know, it's a starter set. You can design your own layouts. In the bottom right, it shows some of the other starter set pieces that you can get. They were calling it the Hot Wheels Track System Accessory Packs. They have different things. I don't know if I've ever got this speedometer pack. But uh, I definitely have bits and pieces of the others. Oh, yeah, Volcano Blowout. I've done a review on that set. You can check on that video. It's right there. It's a pretty cool little track set. You seen all the track pieces were red? Yeah, that's the color that they were using in the late 90s. On the back of five packs, they would also show the track sets because uh, you buy the cars, they want to get you to buy the track sets too. You can see the red track on the back of the five packs as well. This one's a couple years after, but it still shows a track layout over there. I'm reviewing this in 2016. If you're looking for five packs that work on the track, you're going to look for packs that say track aces or race aces or track stars or X racers because the back of the package is just basically advertising. But this one here, it shows volcano blowout. That's because this was the volcano blowout blasters. So yes, this one was intended to work on that volcano blowout. Here you can see figure eight. Yep, there was a figure eight. Here you have figure eight racers. So these models, you know, they should work on that figure eight set. Here's the other one, that's a figure eight. This one is G-Force. Actually, there was a G-Force track set. I'm pretty sure it's just a gravity drop. And I'm sure you know which model's my favorite in this one. What a beauty. Once again, track set. This one here, let's see, Speed Demons. Yeah, you know what, these might work on the track. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use this, this pack here for the review. That one there does have the older one. But look, you're not Harley Davidson 5-pack. Awesome 5-pack. But this is not a, these are not models you're going to put on the track. Matter of fact, this one might not even fit on the track. This one, you might work in the boosters. Uh, this one, look at these bumpy sides. Looks cool. Opening hood, but I, I don't know. This one might work. This one it has a wheelie bar way in the back. Yeah, this one's not going to work in the loops. So I'll be testing the set with the two models that it came with, as well as this five pack. 
Good news. I started to take the parts out of the set, and look what I found. Instructions. That's, uh, that's good news, so I can check to see if all the parts are there. And uh, I haven't seen that one yet. Sure enough, it's underneath. We have a sticker sheet. And here's that little centerpiece. This is gonna this, this is gonna give us our markers where to put our jumps and landing pads. More good news. I checked the parts list and I have everything. Except they have two different cars shown. I did get power piston. That's the model right there. Did get power piston, but right here they show power rocket. Instead, I got the power pipes. Matter of fact, look, it says on the side, starter set. Yeah, there was a figure eight starter set. Well, since they show power rocket, I guess I'll be doing this five pack here because it's got a power rocket. This is the uh, G-Force uh, G-Force five pack I showed before. And the five models that I'm going to be using for the review, power rocket. Here you have convertible Camaro. In orange, T-Bird Stalker. There's a Porsche 930. And on top of Ferrari, even though you can't get Ferraris nowadays in the stores from Mattel, you can pick up some old stuff and get some Ferraris. That's a Ferrari F50. On the back page, they talk about supporting your bases. You can use books. You can use tape. Just make sure your parents say it's okay. And here's another book. You'll be seeing me use these weights. This way I don't have to uh, worry about that other stuff. But be careful with weights. Don't drop them on your toes. And look at that. Squeeze and flare. That's what I've been telling you, except I talk about pinch and flare. I don't know why I, I don't know why I started calling it pinch and flare, but you pinch this side that the car's on, and the other side of the track when the car comes out, you want to flare that side out. This way the cars don't nick that edge. In order to build your curves and U-turns, you use these pieces. Here is your inner out piece. Then you have these little adjustment pieces that bring it back depending on how steep you want your curve. And here's the return on this side. Here I have one already built and it's exactly the same. 20 years later, it's exactly the same as modern day Hot Wheels track builder system parts. All of the track pieces are high sidewall except for two and those two are meant for the loop. Let's take a look at the boosters. Back then it was like a foam. Nowadays, in modern times, they use a rubber, but this is a foam, and this eventually wears down. But check it out. It has a, uh, you can change how fast you want your booster to go. You could put it high and then slow it down, put it whatever you want. If you're next to a loop, you want high power. If you're close to, if you're just doing a straightaway, maybe you don't want it going so fast, you get to adjust it. Here is the uh, battery compartment. I like these because look, you can put your finger in right here and, and pop it, pop out your batteries or uh, pop that open if you can't get it open. And, and I almost got my finger caught. And there's where you put your uh, D batteries. You have three different size track supports and then you have these extenders. You pop these on and these will give you different heights for your supports depending on the track layout that you want to do. These pieces here are for the jump ramps. As you can see, I have one attached to this platform. This is a landing pad. And on this one, I've had a piece of track connected to the landing pad. They also have these little supports to give your car more of a smooth landing pad. By the way, there is a connector in here, right there. This is a, an older style that they were using during this, uh, these track sets. Here's a close-up of it. It has these uh, little places to where it can give tension on the sides of the track. Uh, pretty ingenious uh, track connectors. The last feature is so small, but it's so important. Here we have the loop that was in the set. Here's one of the boosters. Check out the loop. Look at the tab. It's practically on the ground. But you know what? Boosters, look, the track doesn't come out on the ground. It's up in the air. As a matter of fact, Mattel's released other loops the same thing. You see this loop here? It's on the ground. You rarely ever see me use these kinds of loops. You always see me use this kind to where, look, you can see how the, the, the loop is elevated up off of the ground. Even these newer track builder loops, I use these as well. I like these because they're elevated up in the air. Here you have your booster. Here's a piece of track. Let me, this track went with that red one. Let me go ahead and hook it on right there. Now look, there's so much room underneath 
that you can fit a whole piece of track. So that means when the car is shooting out of the booster, where's it going? It's going up here. Look, it's hitting up here in the loop. So they have these two little parts. I don't know if I've even seen these before. If I have, I didn't know what they were for. Well, now I know. You pop this right here, slide it onto your loop base. Now you can see it's elevated up in the air. It's the right height for the car to come out of the booster. You have your piece of track, connect it up. Now, when the car comes out, it comes level straight out of the booster right into the loop instead of flying up into the air over here. Here you can see I have both adapters attached to the loop base and I'm going to use this weight to help brace my loop. Inside the instructions, it had this really cool layout, so I'm going to go ahead and do that one first rather than what's on the box. It's very big, 35 square feet, about 7 foot long by 5 foot wide. I'm going to be starting the cars on this straightaway here, sending them into the booster, and there's that loop we've been talking about. Going to have a jump, goes right over that spiral, comes around, another booster, and then it sends it into this, uh, this is rather unique, you don't see this in too many sets. We're going to try the two cars that came with the set first, Power Pistons in purple. Oh, i got to adjust my jump, it's uh, not lined up. That's going to be a tricky spot, I think, because they have the cars going from a booster up a hill and right into a curve, but I think they're still going to be flying up in the air. I better get that track straight so that if they do go airborne, they land back in the track. See, that's my concern. They're going to be flying off the track right there. Yep. Let's see if I can adjust it and make that hill a little lower. Actually, before I do that, I'm going to slow down that booster. Remember, it's adjustable. Since they landed here, that means my track might not be straight. Another thing, is that the track is a little crooked, it's leaning this way. I'm going to put the podium or the stanchion on the other side. There you go, a little adjusting. That's four laps already. Oh, nice job. Now here comes power pipes. Oh, what happened? Hey, he got quite a few laps too. I lost track. This is, I think there's a number four. I'll see if he goes another lap or two before I take him off. Okay, we gotta move on. Good job. Now, not only one of my favorite cars, but one of my favorite decorations, the Patriotic Power Rocket. Oh, I got one lap. I don't think he likes that spiral. Stop. Oh, good. Oh, it was in the air. Now he's going to take a break over there with power pistons. Here comes the Porsche 930.
Whoa! Last shot, he did okay on his first try though. All of a sudden, he doesn't want to work in the loop. Oh, almost got two laps. Came off the track and he hit the curve. Here comes the T-Bird Stalker. Yeah! Go, baby, go! We'll give him another couple laps. We might have to stop him like power pipe. There you go. Good job. Now it's time for the Camaro convertible. Woohoo! Uh, can't handle that curve right after a booster. To be honest, I'm surprised he's making it through the loop. Hey, don't be picking on the Ferrari. Okay, that's enough. Here comes the Ferrari F50. Oh, we got one lap. After a while, the force of the cars coming down the track causes separation. So you have to go around and tighten things up. Let's go ahead and do the Camaro one more time. Maybe the track needed adjustment. Nope, still doesn't like that curve. Here comes our Ferrari again. Let's see if he can do a few laps. I think he did one before. That's one. Oh! Ah. Uh. Well, we get one good lap out of them. Overall, that's a pretty wild setup that's pretty challenging to the cars. Let me go ahead and get these two set up and I'll show you these right after the break. Here's that intersection, two jumps. Got a booster heading straight into one jump. And this one over here, the booster sends the cars around a curve before they go to the jump. I like this layout. Got some nice long stretches around the back. In the corner, you have that turbo spiral. Again, a booster and a loop. I'm gonna be testing the cars one at a time, and then I'll see if I can get a couple cars going. Maybe we'll have a crash in that intersection. I'm also gonna just use music because I already talked about the parts, and you know I'll be adjusting the track as I go along. Here comes Power Piston. Thank <laughs> you. 
now it's time for power pipes. This is the Pontiac Salsa. Up next, Splitting Image. There's another older model, Speed Blaster. You might be fans of Twin Mill 3, but here's Twin Mill 2. And here comes Road Rocket. Let's go ahead and try multiple cars now. Power Piston did pretty good. I'll be using him. Road Rocket, you know, the older version, you can open the canopy. The newer version, you cannot. Road Rocket, he'll be joining us as well. How about that uh, T-Bird Stalker that I tested before? As far as uh, Power Pipes, I think it was. Power Pipes, I'm afraid. Oh, you went under it this time.
Well, that was the layout that was right on the box. There it is in the instructions. We got one more coming up right after this. Well, I'm all set up, and I think this is my favorite layout yet. I like how it has nice, long straightaways. Yeah, the spiral is still there. The jump is still there. Yes, and we still have the uh, loop, but we have nice, long straightaways. Sometimes when you have layouts with so many tricks and turns and stuff, the cars don't get a chance to ride. Well, this time, look, nice, long straightaways after the stunts. A quick note about the instructions on this curve and this one over here, they only show one piece in the middle. You have your entry and your exit, and then they have just one 45 piece. Actually, you're gonna need two 45 pieces. Otherwise, this thing, uh, it, was, it was way out of whack. So just a little bit of a goof in the instructions. By the way, I got a X Racers. So let's do a modern pack. X Racers five pack. The five models in the pack Here's the list. You have the Scion XB, Nerve Hammer, High Tech Missile, Paradigm Shift, and Burlesque. So there you, <laughs> there you have the Scion, Nerve Hammer, High Tech Missile, Paradigm Shift, and Burlesque. We haven't seen Burlesque or Paradigm Shift in quite some time. Here's the lineup. I'll be starting with the two cars that came with the set, and then I'll do the new X Racers pack I just opened up, and then I already showed you the other two sets. Pistons part popped off. Let's go ahead and pop it back in.
hope you enjoyed my review of the Hot Wheels Motorized Max Tracks Racing Set from 1998. I'll be using it for a track time video pretty soon as well. I'll be adding the volcano to a layout, make my own custom layout, and that's why I like starter sets. Thank you for the thumbs up, thank you for subscribing, and have fun with your toys. Bye-bye.